You know, there's not many locations I've been to, and I don't want to use the word starstruck because that's not it at all, but one of those where you just kind of realize where you're at. This is one of them for me, and I don't know why, but just standing there a second ago, I was kind of like, I'm standing at Clyde Barrow's grave. That, that kind of hit me. You know, being a true crime guy, it doesn't get much more real than this. All right, folks, this is gonna be kind of an odd thrown together video. I plan on doing two or three more videos with much more detail than this one on this particular subject. Of course, y'all already know what it is. Y'all seen the thumbnail, y'all read it. Bonnie and Clyde, this is gonna be my first video. I'm actually here at the memorial already. I'm not gonna show you too much. I'm gonna pan around, show you that. Give you a little bit of info right quick. We're gonna visit some graves. We're gonna visit everything we can on this trip. I'm gonna introduce you to a lot of people show you a lot of graves, take you to a couple locations, and um, get set up to make a couple more videos in the future that are a lot more detailed. And uh, so y'all stick around, I hope y'all enjoy this. Some of it's repetitive, a lot of YouTubers have done it. This is mine, it's a bucket list item for me. So y'all stick around, I hope y'all enjoy it. All right, folks, we made it over here to Crown Hill Memorial Park in Dallas. She was born in Rowena, Texas. She was killed in Gibsland, Louisiana, age of 24. I'm standing in front of her grave right now. I'm gonna spin this around. I'm gonna show you all the grave of Bonnie Parker. You know, it's crazy what brings us to places like this. This lady helped bring terror, fear, all those words to many, many people. And people come out here by the droves to visit. I'll never understand it. I mean, here I stand doing the same thing, but you know, just think about this grave. This girl was 24 years old. Her mom was buried right next to her. I had heard a rumor that there's two children buried here in unmarked graves. I don't know if they're to the right side of the mama or possibly, I don't know. But this is not where she was originally buried. I'm gonna have to do a little research and I'll put that on the screen for y'all right now, the location where she was originally buried, if I can find it. And, um, but yeah, her headstone reads this. It's a poem she wrote. As the flowers are all made sweeter by the sunshine and the dew, so this old world is made brighter by the lives of folks like you. Bonnie fancied herself as a bit of a poet. She grew up wanting to do things like go to Broadway. She had the, you know, the Hollywood dream, New York dream, Broadway dream, whatever it is. She had it. She wrote lots of poems. Some of them were actually quite good. Unfortunately, she wrote them from the back of a uh, Ford V8 on scraps of paper while running from the cops and murdering people. Anyhow, it's hard to think that four foot 11, 100 pounds, 24 year old little girl could do all that and have the effect, impact is what I almost said, that she's had. But we're gonna go see uh, Clyde's grave next and maybe one day they'll finally let them be buried next to each other. That's what they wanted. What I understand the mother Emma was dead set against it. All right, let's go.
Yes, we're walking up on the graves right now. Several of the Barrow gang right here. Little fun fact. When I come do things like this, a lot of people will be like, you know, why are you showing this? Why are you showing that? And, you know, it's folklore. It's, it's one of these things that I call it folklore. I don't know. It, it's, it's one of those things everybody talks about. They're still making movies about it. There's a lot of interest in it. And this is how it is today, 2022, almost 2023, just a couple of days from it. And I think people will still like to see it. But I always thought the irony of this was that they buried Buck and Clyde right next to each other. And Buck is the one that really got Clyde involved in crimes. That's pretty well noted consistently. Ultimately, I don't know if Clyde ended up being a little crazier than Buck sounded like. I think Buck was trying to get Clyde out of the trouble before they all ended up perishing. But I don't know. It's one of those, one of those things. Here they lay eternally for together. And they ultimately were their, their own demise. I don't know. It's kind of funny to me. Not funny. I shouldn't say that. But ironic, I guess. But yeah, Clyde and Buck are buried right here next to each other. Buck's name is Marvin. Here's the parents right here, Henry and Kumi. Then the oldest brother of the bunch, Elvin. There was seven total kids and uh, Clyde was the fifth. You know, there's not many locations I've been to and I don't want to use the word starstruck because that's not it at all. But one of those where you just kind of realize where you're at. This is one of them for me, and I don't know why, but just standing there a second ago, I was kind of like, I'm standing at Clyde Barrow's grave. That, that kind of hit me. You know, being a true crime guy, it doesn't get much more real than this. So one thing I do want to make real clear on this channel Y'all know how I am. I do not in any way condone their actions. I think it's a very interesting story. These two raised hell for two or three years. And man, we were talking about them, what, 80 years later, 90 years later almost? They're still famous. They're still making movies about them and stuff. I mean, you know, it's kind of crazy. Uh, I wonder what Bonnie and Clyde would have thought about this fame if they knew what it would happen. I guess they would have probably loved it. They both seemed like they were Wanted to be high rollers, live high on the hog, you know. So, just making it real clear. I'm not supporting what they're doing. I just think it's a very intriguing story. So, it's loud out here. I don't know how this video is going to come through. But one thing I wanted to say about these guys back here behind me, they were a bunch of, they were described as clowns when it came to being thieves and crooks and criminals. They didn't have a clue what they were doing. And about the only thing they were good at doing was killing. When it came to robbing and stealing, they never were very successful. And uh, they, did, they did make away with some money on a couple bank heists, stole a few cars, but uh, they began very clumsy. And even all the way towards the ends, a lot of the things that they did were just very, very clumsy. All right, folks, we made it out here to Social Spring Cemetery in Red River Parish, Louisiana, the middle of nowhere. But I came here to show you two very important graves in the Bonnie and Clyde uh, story. These aren't shown very much, but to me, they're very important because ultimately this is who ended the uh, whole chase. This is the whole thing, you know. Ivy Medden, who was Henry Medden's father, made a deal with the police. I don't know exactly who the deal was made with. I believe it was Frank Hamer. But Henry would eventually lead to an opportunity 
for Hamer and his gang to uh, kill Bonnie and Clyde. And in the cooperation with Ivy and Henry, Henry would be pardoned from all charges and be free and not have to return back to prison. So that's Henry Medlin's grave right there over my shoulder, right there. He was pardoned in the state of Texas and that did not, uh, however, save him from the state of Oklahoma where he committed a crime, I believe killing a peace officer. And they came back and sentenced him to death. That was later changed to a life sentence. And from what I, a lot of this stuff is uh, hard to find facts on this stuff, but from what I can find, he did serve eight years of that sentence. He was paroled and later was killed crawling underneath the train. Uh, it don't, doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I think uh, a lot of people can read between the lines. He told on one of the uh, most beloved criminals of that time and ultimately had them both killed. Within two years, him and his father both faced the same fate. So I don't know how much of that I believe. It was an accident. So these are not very easy to read. This is Ivy Medden. I'm gonna to try to get a little bit of an angle here so you can see it. Actually see the text on the grave. It says, gone but not forgotten. And this is Henry Medden. This is the grave of one of Bonnie and Clyde's uh, gang members, the Barrow Gang. I think he was 22 years old. Both of these two gentlemen were killed around 1946. And there's a lot of suspicion surrounding their deaths. A lot of people say they were eventually uh, paid back for ratting out Bonnie and Clyde. I don't know, this is a small community around here and I cannot imagine living here if you had done something like that and this community was protecting Bonnie and Clyde heavily and they knew you did it I gotta think you're probably gonna you're probably gonna face some blowback on that one it's one of these things that you never think you're gonna get to see it's kinda out of the way it's not really in between anything as a, as a YouTube filmer I thought this was gonna be one of these it was just so remote i would never get a chance to get here and i'm here hey so when Cl bonnie and clyde came that day this is the door that clyde went in right here this is the original uh store where he went in and bought the sandwiches he would have pulled up right here in the front somewhere and uh, he would have entered that building and got his sandwiches and they would have left heading this way towards the the ambush site we're going to go there now but i'm trying to give you all a perspective of what bonnie and clyde would have seen imagine this being dirt road i don't imagine there would have been any concrete in 1934 on these roads maybe maybe i don't know but this would have been the exact path they would have traveled i'm going to show you all some of the uh path on down the road a little bit Kind of give you a little bit of a experience of what the uh, drive might have been like for them. All right, y'all stay tuned. They come down this hill and it turns to the right. Up there on the right, you'll see a couple cars parked. That's the ambush site markers. Right across the street on the left is where the gang of six waited on them, the Louisiana and Texas deputies. I'm going to pull up here. I'm going to walk you through the details of this. So I'm standing pretty much even here with the memorial site. This is the last uh, curve they would have ever came around. We drove through that just a minute ago and I showed you that. Okay. As they reach the top of this hill, the top of this hill here is kind of flat. I'm going to spin the camera around here and show you. But that right there behind me, that's where they, uh, the ambush was set up. All six officers from Louisiana and, and Texas were stationed behind this. So I'm going to walk over here on this side a little bit. I'm not going to get up on the hill up in here. But I'm just going to show you the view. This would have been the view. Okay. 
something like this. As they came in, Clyde would have came right in here, but Ivy Medlin would have set his truck up. It was a four, it was a Model A logging truck. He would have set it up right in here somewhere. He took one of the tires off of it as to replicate that he had a flat tire. Bonnie and Clyde had just left the uh, store there in Gibsland. They had got a fried bologna sandwich and a BLT. And Bonnie, I'm not real sure which one was for who. I had heard that the BLT was for uh, Clyde and the fried bologna was for Bonnie. But Bonnie had taken a couple bites out of the sandwich immediately uh, after leaving the store. And she was holding on to onto it wrapped up in a napkin when this whole scene ends. But they pull up here and they recognize Ivy Medden, obviously. And they're going to offer him help. At the exact moment that they stop, Clyde's left foot is still on the clutch. All of the 1940, 1934, I'm sorry, Fords had manual transmissions if they came with the V8 option. The moment he stops rolling, Ivy Mebden hunches over like his stomach is hurting and rolls, runs into the woods. I don't know if he ran this side or the side over there where the officers were, but he runs into the woods. Immediately at that point, the officers cut loose. When the first shot was fired, one of the officers reports he heard a scream that Bonnie had screamed upon the gunfire. The first shot, they said, which once, who knows? These, you have six guns going off, hit Clyde straight in the head, killed him instantly, okay? Immediately thereafter, they were riddled. 150 shots, they say, were fired in total. 26, I've heard 25, 27, but 26 is the consensus that I keep seeing. Bullet holes were in Bonnie, 17 were in Clyde. The officers faced, police in general, faced a huge uh, retaliation from the people because of the excessive force that was used on them. Ted Hinton said they weren't, they weren't uh, taking any chances. They took them out. They did, used everything they had. Given the situation and everything was going on, I don't blame them personally. So pretty much in this exact angle we're at right now, that's the bank back there where the men were. They would have fired almost in this exact direction. As he was shot, the car rolled forward, they said about 20 yards, and rested which I'm gonna say, which would have been about five, 10 yards ahead of this uh, sign here that I'm walking past. So the car would have came to rest pretty much right about here, based on what they said. Thought that was a little fact that I wanted to make sure I put in there for y'all. So once the shooting and everything was over, they did an inventory of the car. There was machine guns, pistols, shotguns. They claimed to have $18,000 in the car with them that was missing, that never turned up, that somebody had stolen. Uh, who really knows? This case is one of those that is littered with rumors. People were taking, they were pulling hair out of, out of Bonnie's head, taking pieces of her hair, cutting pieces of her clothes off, picking up bullets, picking, I mean, uh, you know, like spent brass and everything, shotgun shells, picking up glass off of the ground from the car, anything they could get their hands on. So I've shown a lot of stuff like this and I usually don't, I usually don't read them off and I get a lot of flack for it. So I'm gonna read it off to y'all from now on. This site, May 23rd, 1934, Clyde Barrow and Bonnie Parker were killed by law enforcement op officers or officials. I don't know, they've shot this thing up so much I can't read it all. Erected by Benville Parish Police Jury. On this site, May 23rd, 1934 at 9.15 a.m., the infamous outlaws Bonnie Parker and Clyde Barrow met their demise at the hands of these dedicated law enforcement officials. Least we forget, these brave and vigilant conservators of the peace. Front left, Deputy Sheriff Robert Alcorn, Bienville, Sheriff Henderson Jordan, and Texas Ranger Captain Frank Hamer. Back left, Deputy Sheriff Ted Hinton, Chief Deputy Prentice Oakley, and Texas Ranger B.M. Galt. Right across the street, right here is the hill where all those officers I just read off were waiting. Down there is the road where they came from. Wonder what that old V8 would have sounded like coming around that corner, man. Can you imagine? And this is the real deal, man. This is where it happened at. You know, you can go to all these houses and they might have been there. Who don't knows? You can do all this stuff, but they were here. We know that. They came around that corner, man. Bucket list item for me. I'm 
this is one of those things when I come here to places like this, like a celebrity, when you see a celebrity, how you're like starstruck. I'm a true crime guy. So when I come to places like this, it's like, it, it, what they call it, tickles my fancy. Horrible story, horrible scenario as to why I'm here. Just the fact that I am here, for me, I've got about 10, 10 stories like this that are ones that just absolutely I must do. And this is one of them. So y'all stick around. When the coroner's report came out, he said he could barely keep the embalming fluid in their body. They were so riddled. I'm not gonna get into the details because they're gonna end up blocking my video on this uh, YouTube. So I don't wanna say too much more. There's pictures out there, check them out. It was, it was a bad deal. That's gonna pretty much wrap up this little location right here, okay? I've showed you the memorial. I've drew, drew it out for you best I possibly can. All right, folks. So thank y'all for watching my video, Bonnie and Clyde. I've got at least two more videos coming up, maybe three. I'm gonna really dig deep into th this story and I wanna go to some of the off the wall places I'm talking about when y'all see what I'm talking about. Some of this stuff's never been done, okay? I'm talking about deep dive. I got the memorial beh behind me. I got the road right there. I got the bank right there. True crime guys, paradise, right? Like, share, and subscribe. I got uh, tons more stuff coming. Okay, I'm, I'm so I'm speechless. I'm so happy right now. This may freak some of y'all out that I'm this happy over something like this because it was a criminal thing, but this is one of my bucket lists. So, anyways, I'm gonna stop acting crazy. Thank y'all again. Thoughts and prayers go out to all of the people affected by this negatively. Family, friends, anything. I should have said that earlier. It's from the heart. I mean it. A lot of people have been affected by these two uh, crazy kids. And uh, anyways, we're going to catch y'all on the next one. Appreciate it. Bye.